<laughs> Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. Tis the season where I try to come up with something special. Not your average synth getting roasted in toxic gear space threads, but technology that shook music at its core. Today we are going to talk about the outright evil, the deeply despicable, billboard chart degrading and probably most detested paid download since the infamous MIDI pack and Terrace Autotune. This 1997 plugin not only turns talentless hacks like me into talentless hacks sounding like Roger Troutman playing talkbox with his derriere, it also, like all good things, was invented by an Exxon Mobil engineer. At the first glance, Autotune is ticking all the disruptive music technology boxes, right up there with digital recordings, sampling, torrents and the Akai Tabro Wolf, the simple yet effective 90s plugin. Deck the horse with bars of holly. Yes, he was into powerful vocal production suite. We will have a closer look at in a minute, but first we have to talk about where the controversial effect you hear on literally every single piece of post-2000 popular music came from. Conceived by Dr. Andy Hildebrand, a research engineer specialized in stochastic estimation theory to help a colleague's wife to finally hit a note, it was originally used as the magic button pre-internet sound engineers didn't talk about publicly before it rose to questionable fame with chairs believe although Kid Rock made its use more than obvious a few months earlier. They tried to sweep it under the rug with Wakoda pedal conspiracy theories, but Pandora's box was already wide open. At the turn of the century, Melodyne entered the ring and became the industry standard for serious vocal correction, while artists like T-Pain built their entire careers on the artifacts of autotune and turned it into the primary instrument in urban music genres of all sorts. Many people actually capable of delivering a solid vocal performance were not amused. But it's not meant for everybody. That's why you use autotune and I don't. JC rapped about its death. Time magazine put it on their list of the 50 worst inventions. Our most beloved audio boomer is not anti-autotune. It was ridiculed by The Simpsons and, of course, South Park. To make it make that sound, you had to sing off key. You have to be a bad singer. As of now, Antares product portfolio goes well beyond a single plugin. Of course, there's the primary cash cow that comes in varying degrees of professionality ranging from the humble access version to a slightly scaled down artist variety and finally the pro version with its melodyne like graphical mode. Fancy features like this aside, using the plugin is super easy, barely an inconvenience. Adjust vocal range of the input, choose a scale uh, or distill it from another track with the auto key plugin, dial in the desired degree of t painness tell the plugin how to deal with naturally occurring vibrato and reintroduce some human touch with flex tune and humanize. Tracking helps the plugin to deal with unwanted artifacts. Speaking of, you can go back to original Eurodance goodness by selecting classic mode and sadly tweak formants and exploit the pitch parameter for Mickey Mouse vocals or satanic effects. And Terrace has a few more tricks up its sleeve if these sound design options don't cut it. I'm a big fan of Mutator as it preserves intelligibility even at extreme settings, but the graphics of the throat plugin are a bit too much human centipede for my taste. Bread and butter processing like compression, EQ, tube saturation and the sound soap noise reduction are nice, reverbs and modulation FX are hidden in the EFX Plus plugin. There's a mic modeler that ain't so bad. You can mess with punch, breathiness of your voice and unwanted sibilance using the dedicated plugins and duo, choir and harmony engines the ancient carol. certainly put a few background vocalists out of their job. Chances are I'm going to use the articulated talk box and vocodist vocoder in this month's Patreon shoutout. All this is rounded off with the auto-tune driven sampler slice which is chock full of beatbox snippets. <laughs> 
and ready to use vocal samples. My spine tingles. Although you can still acquire perpetual licenses of the single plugins, the bundle in its entirety is only available as a subscription and doesn't come for cheap. It was around 50 bucks for two months. I had to wait almost a week to actually get access to the software and although the last Autotune version Pro X is supposed to be included here, I didn't get a copy. An Antares licensed Tascam TA1BP would have fit this show better anyway. It is hard to imagine many contemporary genres without autotune. Was it the end of music as we knew it or did it open up a universe of vocal performance possibilities? Yeah! You have already heard some proper vocal correction cringe in today's intro tune. Merry Christmas! Bear with me in this autotune only jam and possible alternate opening monologue beginning. Welcome to Bad Gear The show about the world's most hated audio tools World's most hated audio tools Interesting. Although I have used autotune for technical corrections before, this was the first time actually recording with it. And it is true that you have to sing off key to create the famous effect. Latency can be an issue here and it adds an aggressive vibe that is certainly not to everyone's taste. I wanna know if we can make it work in a pop context and create this sorry there's no second jam today but it would have ruined my Christmas if I had to suffer through producing a chair spoof PG-13 Yule tight anthem. No one gives a f about auto-tune when it's Christmas. All the songs were recorded pre-98. Pre-98. This platinum album multiplier gets roasted like chestnuts on an open fire. But no one gives a f about autotune when it's Christmas. Verdict. Autotune is one of the most important FX plugins in contemporary pop music and it seems like it is here to stay. It has a very particular sound and leaves a sonic watermark on songs in a way quite similar to heavily distorted guitars, overly squashed masterings, cliché lo-fi processing, 90s advertisement big beat breaks and dubstep warps, all of which were used in both fantastic music and as a lazy crutch for beginners and sellouts. Do I like the sound of autotune? No nor am I particularly fond of working with it. However, the same applies to other instruments like bagpipes or the banjo, yet I would personally consider it disrespectful to mess with people's preferences in genres like traditional Scottish or retro country music. When I take a look at the Billboard 100 chart of 1997, the year before autotune rose to power, even an unhealthy dose of nostalgia wouldn't allow me to appreciate most of these songs with a few notable exceptions. Chances are that if you don't like the popular music released over the last 25 years, it's probably not Autotune's fault. Merry Christmas, thanks for watching and see you next time. Yay! Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.